4D opening fairy tale with a surprise inside acrylic nailer tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you a castle book. So it's like a fairy tale book that you open up and then there's this pop-up castle inside, sort of like the pop-up cards. I made a bunch of those in elementary school. So uh, this was where that inspiration came from. I hope you like it as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to all my future videos as well. I'm going to begin by applying a layer of shimmery pink acrylic over the lower two thirds of the nail. So from about your apex point all the way down to the tip and just blending that up so it's a nice fade. And then after that, I'm going to take a bit of clear, or not clear acrylic, cover pink acrylic, and I'm going to fill in the rest of the nail. So apply a bead right over like your apex area and then blend that down the rest of the nail and then fade that up towards your cuticle area. So as you're fading that up towards the cuticle area, make sure that you have a nice level of acrylic so that, because depending on your cover pink, some of them are super opaque and some of them aren't. But if yours is like mine where it isn't super pigmented, that you have enough color there where it doesn't look splotchy. Then when you're happy with the fade of the two colors together, encapsulate the entire nail with a layer of clear acrylic. This um, pink to nude gradient is like my absolute favorite background I've ever done ever. I, I That sounds like it's a ridiculous statement, but it is. I, I just love it. I fell in love with it and it is something that I feel like I need to do on every single nail because I just love it so much. But once I've got it that far, I'm going to file the nail into shape with my e-file, starting out with a coarse bit to remove any bulk and then using a finer bit just to smooth out the surface texture and make sure it is nice and easy to work on top of. So there's that finer bit, which is essentially buffing the nail. This step could easily be accomplished with a little white buffer block too. So then on a piece of paper, I'm going to be drawing out my template for the book cover pages, for the book cover and the pages. So you're gonna draw one rectangle that's for your cover and that's going to be slightly larger than the second rectangle that is for the pages. So there's a second one, so just draw those and that's all you have to do, they don't have to be perfect by any means. And then set a nail form backing on top of it. You can see your sketch through the nail form backing which makes it really easy to get two sets of covers and two sets of pages that are the same size. For your covers, I'm going to sculpt on top of the larger rectangle with a kind of a shimmery brown acrylic. Most of this isn't even seen, so the color of brown you use is fairly irrelevant. You do want it to be brown, but it gets covered up, and you'll see that later in the video, but it does get covered up. So using, you know, a fancy brown isn't necessary. If you don't have one that's shimmery, it doesn't matter. Mine just happens to be shimmery, so that works too. So you're going to actually make two of those. So there's the first one and the second one. And then you're going to sculpt the pages with white acrylic. Same thing, you're going to make two of these. So as you can see, I didn't clean my brush very well. So my white has a little bit of brown residue, which sounds really horrible, like brown snow. Not the same. Um, but <laughs> just from the brown acrylic, it doesn't matter because that's the first layer and these pages do get two layers. The book covers, you want them to stay fairly thin so that they're not super thick, but these pages, if your story's got any length to it at all, you want to add a second layer of white acrylic over the pages so that they are thicker, so that it does look like there's a little bit more substance to this story. So add that first layer just to get the shape of the rectangle down, and then add the second layer to get the actual thickness that you want your pages to be. So there's the first one, add that thickness to the second one, and then we can move on. So then I'm going to gently file the covers and the pages with a hand file, basically just going over the sides, a little bit over the top, just to smooth them out if I feel like it needs it. You can really work fast with this. It doesn't have to be anything too fancy, but just straighten them out, maybe smooth out the top sides if you want to too. It doesn't have to be, like you don't have to actually go crazy and file and file and file. If they're not perfect, they're not perfect. If they're close to perfect, that's all you need. So just make sure that they are fairly, fairly symmetrical too, and make sure that you're book covers and your pages that you can stack them together and see if they all line up right and then adjust if you need to. So do the same thing for the pages, kind of straighten them out a little bit, file off anything that needs it, repeat for the other one, and then you will be good to go. And then after you have that, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. I am using a mailing envelope, a waterproof mailing envelope. This is a priority mail envelope if you are in the US and I'm going to cut out a section of that and then scribble over it with a brown permanent marker. The great thing about these is that they're tear proof and they're waterproof and you can write on them. It's like the perfect weird little material and I use them all the time for different nail art projects. But you're going to color both the front and the back with a brown sharpie just scribbling over the whole thing. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, if it looks a little bit uh, variegated as far as the depth of color, that really is similar to a leather bound book. 
So after you have that done, you're going to cover your little one piece of your book cover with some nail glue and you're going to lay it down. As you can see, I made a huge mess and that's okay. And then grab one piece of your pages and align it so that it lines up with one of the sides, just like that. And then you're going to glue the pages to the other book cover, just like so. It does not have to be, um, you don't want to glue it into the book quite yet. So just glue those things, those two together first, hold that together until it is set. And then after you have that, you're going to stack your book so that the aligned sides of the pages are together, spread more nail glue over the top of the book cover. And if you are like me and you despise nail glue, this part is like a cringe worthy moment because nail glue just doesn't agree with me. And then fold that piece of binding over the entire book and hold that until it's set. Once you open it up, you can trim off any extra paper that's there or, you know, mailing envelope piece. And then you have a little book that you can open and close. Now to make the fun part, we're going to take another piece of that envelope and we're going to make our castle. And you can do any kind of doodle in here you want. You could make a bouquet of roses, really simple, or make a little, like, you could do like stick people and make a little family that pops out of the book. Just let your imagination go wild. First draw out the shape, the outlines for your picture with black and then fill it in with your colors. I made my castle purple and pink. I used a purple Sharpie and then a pink highlighter. You can really, like I said, you know, let your imagination run wild and then cut it out of the book. So you're going to want to cut it out so you have a little flap at the bottom that you actually glue down. So the castle you don't glue down into the pages, but just that flap. And I somehow miraculously managed to miss the part of the video in saving my footage when I glued this down. So just glue that bottom piece into the book and then fold it back and you should be good to go. So just cut off that extra material that you can get it as clean as possible. Obviously my scissors look a little bit cumbersome since they're so big compared to the tiny drawing, but do the best. Just fold that back and then glue that down and then you can glue the book onto the nail. So just stick a little bit more of that pesky nail glue, glue it down. I also wrote once upon a time on the front of my book with black and gold. And then I'm going to put a layer of gel sealer over the background, make it nice and shiny. And then I'm going to take a little bit of what's called jewelry gel. And there's a gazillion brands that have it. And it's just, it's a very thick, very sticky gel that makes it very easy to add embellishments. The one that I'm currently using is just one I found off of Amazon that was really inexpensive and I decided to give it a try. So I'm going to put little dabs of that jewelry gel down throughout the background and then fill it in with different kinds of rhinestones. The first one I used was a little cluster that had a heart, a single silver rhinestone, and then a little crown shape, which I thought was perfect for this design. And I've had for about three years and I've never used it because typically I think it's a little bit too, I don't know, big for my personal preferences, but I thought with this design, it just seemed appropriate. So I hope you guys like this. That is it for the tutorial. I do think I might redo this one at some point, maybe with a different theme. I don't know. I just feel like I have more ideas for it. And here is a Melody Minutes. Can you say octopus? Octopus. Good job. Can you say it one more time? Octopus. Perfect. Can you say duck, duck, goose? Duck, duck, goose. No, do a big one. Do it again. Good job. One more time. Oh, to do yoga. Hold up, put your head to your toes. <laughs> the funny thing with Melody and her yoga is a lot of times she'll just announce, she'll go yoga, and then she'll start contorting herself into all these different poses. I hope you guys like this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.